Alrighty, so in this video, you will learn what are the different types of Forex orders, right? So back in my prop trading days, right, uh, as a futures trader, I I was uh, using different trading uh, software and that particular software exposed me, right, to the different types of orders out there. You have stuff like, you know, machine gun order, iceberg order and stuff like that. And trust me, right, as a retail FX trader, you don't really need to know what are the hundreds of different variations of the different type of orders out there. All you need to know is generally these four types of orders that I'm going to share with you and you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so what are these four types of orders, right? Uh, first one is what we call a market order, a limit order, a stop order, followed by a stop loss order. So I'm going to explain to you what are these four different types of orders and the pros and cons to it. So a market order, what is it, right? It's simply put, right, that you want to enter the market right now, right? For example, you are looking at a chart and the market is, you know, moving without you and you tell yourself, man, I got to be in this move. I got to enter the market right now. And if you want to enter the market right now, you will use a market order. So you know for sure you'll be in the trade, right? Because you're basically, you know, entering the market right now. However, the downside to this is that you will pay a premium, right? So maybe the market might retrace could give could give you a better price, but because of the fact that you want to enter the market right now, you've got to pay a premium, which is whatever the current uh, prevailing market price is at the moment. Okay, so this is a market order to enter the trade right now. The second type of order is what we call a limit order. So you only enter the market if the price comes to your desired level. So let me illustrate, right? So let's say, you know, you are, the market is trading higher, okay? And you don't want to, you know, go long at this point this uh, price over here, maybe you think it's, you know, it's too overbought, it's too high. Instead, you want to, to uh, buy at a lower price. So what you can do is you can put in a limit order, let's say at this uh, this level over here, you put in at this uh, previous uh, resistance turn support, you can put in a, a limit order, okay? So if the market does come back lower and hit this level, you will be filled on your trade. So this is what I mean by enter only if the market comes to your desired level and it's usually a pullback. So this is a, a limit order so the pros is that you know of course you will be entering your trade at a cheaper price right and this would naturally improve your risk to reward uh, the downside to this is that you might miss the move right because you know the market is not necessarily the market doesn't necessarily have to come to the level that you know you are waiting for you might miss the move the market may never come back to the level that you are waiting for for example it trends higher and you queue at this level the market may just does a, a slight pullback and continue trading higher without you and you end up missing the move okay uh, the second thing is that you are trading against the current momentum so what this means is that you know if let's say the market is trading higher right you place a limit order here it comes back down you're basically you know entering against this uh current momentum that is against you of course uh, there are ways to you know uh, to circumvent this right for example you could wait for a, a reversal candlestick pattern wait for the market to do a higher close or you know, something like that right and then you enter the trade all right but generally if you just place uh, buy limit order here, you are simply, you know, uh, trading against the current momentum, right? Not taking into anything else into consideration. Okay, so this is a limit order. The third type of order is what I call a stop order, right? So this simply means that you only enter the trade if the market moves in your favor, right? It has to move in your favor before the trade is triggered. So for example, let's say the market could be in a range, Okay, and you want to trade the breakout of the range. So what you can do is that you can put a buy stop order, let's say at this level over here. So if the market trades and hit this level, only then will you be filled on the trade to go long, right? If the market is, let's say, you know, at this point, at this point, at this point, you will not be filled because your buy stop order is at this level at this high over here. So you only enter the trade if the market, as you can see, moves in your favor, right? Otherwise known as a breakout trade. So uh, the good thing is that you're entering your trades with momentum, right? Because, you know, you're trading as the uh, market is moving in your favor. The downside to this is that it might be a false breakout, right? So it could look something like this. Let's say the market is in a range. It breaks out and it collapses back lower. And you, the next thing you know, you're basically long at the, the absolute highs or thereabout. Okay, so this is a stop order. And it's just the opposite for a sell stop order, right? For a short trade. So moving on, the last type of order is what we call a stop loss order. This is uh, slightly different from the earlier orders because the earlier three orders is orders to get you into a trade. They are entries. Whereas a stop loss order is to get you out of the trade. 
it's an exit. Okay, and uh, this is important. So let's say, for example, how, how it looks like is let's say, you know, you are trading against support resistance. You buy at support in anticipation that the market, you know, were to continue trading higher. But, you know, what happens is that the market collapsed lower. And then, let's say you have a stop loss order at this level, right? Let's call it SL. And if it hits your stop loss level, you will be out of the trade for a loss, right? This kind of, you know, limits your downside because imagine if the market collapsed all the way lower here and you don't have a stop loss your initial loss could have been this but if you don't have a stop loss all right your loss will now be from here to here it's even more so a stop loss order is simply you know a defensive mechanism right to kind of protect your capital if the market goes against you so this is a stop loss order so the pros is that you know you are cutting your losses, you live to fight another day, you don't blow up your entire trading account, and it's like I've said, right? It's a defensive measure. The count, the cons is that the market could, you know, reverse back in your intended direction, right? So what happens often, right, is that, you know, traders, they complain, right? They put their stop loss, let's say, here. Market comes down, spike through, and then close back higher, right? And and, and I, I agree, right? It, it happens from time to time, and, you know, this is the market, but I would rather, you know, you kind of, you know, get stopped out of your trade, right? And, you know, just take that small loss instead of not having a stop loss and then one time come and the market collapse, you lose everything and it's much more painful, right? So would you rather get an, a small end bite, all right? Or would you get a crocodile bite? <laughs> I think uh, the answer is pretty straightforward, okay? So this is a stop loss order. So just a quick recap. Uh, what we have talked about, number one, market order is where you want to enter the trade right now, right? At this very moment, maybe the market is moving without you. You want to enter the trade right now, you use a market order. Number two, a limit order is when you want to, you know, enter at a cheaper price, right? You don't want to pay premium. You want the market to come to your desired level, you use a limit order. But the the uh, the, the the upside is that, you know, you get a good risk to reward on your trade, right? A cheaper price. But the downside is you might miss the move and you're usually entering against the uh, current momentum. The third thing is a stop order, right? Usually when you want to trade breakout, right? You're entering with momentum. That's the uh, good thing, right? The downside to this is that it could be a false breakout. And the last type of order is a stop loss order, typically, you know, used to get you out of your losing trade, right? It protects your uh, capital. You get to live to fight another day, but the downside, it could be, you know, hit your stops and the market, you know, reverse back in your direction. And hey, you know, this is simply the cost of doing business, right? So that is uh, one thing to, to bear in mind as well. Okay, so with that said, right, uh, these are the four types of uh, Forex orders, right? Uh, it can typically be applied to the futures market, the stock market as well. They are pretty much universal and they are very common type of orders that you de should definitely uh, pay attention to. And because I believe that you would most probably use all these four types of orders at one point or another in your trading career. So with that said, I have come to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next.